Well, hey guys, welcome to the Reach Right Podcast, episode number 34. I am your host, Thomas Costello, and with me, as always, is my co-host... Ian Hyatt. Hey, Thomas, how's it going? Going good, man. Going good. Excited for our topic today. We're talking about seven Google grant myths that need to be debunked once and for all. Uh, So it should be a good conversation. Uh, As most of our audience knows that we are... uh, As a company, one of our services, we help churches with the Google grant. And I think it'd be a good conversation because we hear all kinds of misinformation about this grant all the time. People uh, telling us about how it works and those things. And we're pretty familiar with it at this point and hoping we can dispel some of those myths. But can you start us off today? Just kind of, I know you deal with our customers a lot in some of this. Can you give us a kind of a quick rundown on what is the Google grant and uh, what what do people need to know about it? Yeah, I'd love to. So, and it's funny, we're hearing from more churches now compared to ever uh, looking into the Google Grant. So a lot of churches are becoming more uh, aware of it now. Uh, And so it's been been great for us to to connect with so many churches and be able to help them with it. But what Google does, they have, it's basically a part of their brand in a way that they give back. As most of us all know, Google is a search engine juggernaut, if you will. They almost basically have the monopoly on it. (laughs) And uh, and um, yeah, so based upon their success and a way for them to give back uh, out of all their success, they give up to $10,000 a month uh, to 501c3s uh, and nonprofits um, in the form of AdWords marketing dollars. So, um, and it's it's a really generous amount. 10,000 is no small yeah. number, especially when you have companies and even churches and other nonprofits that, that pay thousands a month uh, for, yeah. the, for this very uh, marketing uh, strategy here. So it is very generous and it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's something that they give to, to nonprofits. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, our, our company's story, uh, just kind of highlight this for just a second for people. So they, it, we, we, this is something that we help churches with for sure. But we started out doing this. Uh, I pastored a church uh, that took advantage of the Google grant. Uh, We happen to have someone within our church who was an AdWords specialist. That's what he did for a living. He helped businesses do that. I talked to him about it. I had seen something about the grant uh, and we just took advantage of it and it worked uh, really, really well. We saw tons and tons of visitors because of it. And it's been really interesting to what you were saying. We've just, we've seen more interest than ever by a mile. I mean, so it used to be that we would... Uh, we'd talk to maybe one church a month about something like this here. Uh, And now literally hundreds of churches are reaching out to us every single month about it. And uh, it's really kind of a trip to see. And I, 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 we, we did a lot of content around this and I've kind of, Mm -hmm. it's been interesting because I think we've almost in a way kind of helped make this, uh, this category of advertising for churches. It's really, I think it was really small when we started doing this and nobody ever knew about it. I feel like most pastors have kind of heard whispers of this or know Mm -hmm. something about it, but I still think we run into those that have never heard of it before when they talk to us. And so, uh, it's something that I thought it would be good to chat about that a little bit. So, uh, anyway, uh, so let's get into some of those myths that we hear because we hear them all the time. And uh, I think that when someone hears that there's $10,000 a month, it makes sense that there's skepticism around that because it does sound too good to be true. And the first myth, I think I'll just go ahead and I'll go ahead and tackle it is that this can't be for real. <laughs> that the yeah. Google grant isn't even a, a real thing. Uh, I am uh, here as someone who has personally used it at churches that I have pastored and I have personally helped. Uh, we've helped hundreds of churches go through this process at this point. Uh, and so we are here to tell you that it is 100% totally and completely real. Do you still yeah. hear people that are shocked by it? Or is that something that yeah. you encounter still? It is pretty funny. Uh, and, and when I ask a church, you know, have you heard of the Google grant? They say, yeah, I heard something about that. Is that really a real thing? You know, I'll hear yeah. that kind of feedback. And uh, yeah, like who's going to, and, and then they'll say that the very thing you just mentioned that who's going to just give us 10,000 a month, you know, that's, right. that's, that can't be real. So, yeah. And I think that it, it's, it should be met with healthy skepticism. I yeah. was certainly skeptical when I heard about it. And I, I want to talk just for a second too, about what you said about the, the why behind it. Um, right. I, I think that 
Like, so, yeah, I think that it, it's nice for Google to be able to say, we just want to give back $10,000 a month to nonprofits. And that is that is what's happening, that this is all yeah. accurate. I think that there is other motives behind it there, too. I think it, it sure. actually, uh, in some ways, it kind of inflates their other search pricing. Uh, so they're able to charge more money for other ads because they're kind of funneling more into this. So it doesn't really, it's not as if it costs them $10,000 a right. month. Right. Uh, their their margins are off the charts on search engine ads. It doesn't really cost them anything to add some new clients to this kind of thing who aren't paying anything. So uh, the cost is very limited for them. But um, I do think it is still something that it, it should be taken advantage of for churches. And it is totally real. So yeah. um, you're just yeah. going to have to take our word for it. Go ahead and research it. We'll put yeah. links in the description here to to Google. And you can figure out how you can start getting, uh, getting in line for that grant there and getting it set up. So Yeah, one thing I would also... Yeah, one thing I would also say to that, too, is that I think once uh, a church or an organization or a nonprofit educates themselves of what the actual 10000 is for, well, mm-hmm. then it, it makes more sense. Because at first yeah. glance, you're right. It's easy to be skeptical when you see a big $10,000 per month number. Right. Um, but once you realize what they're actually giving you, it, it, it makes, which we're going to be talking more about here. And with that, I'll bring up point number two, I guess. Yeah. Um, so... And, and that is that there's this notion out there that the grant is for nonprofits, but not churches. Um, and so and I think a lot of people, when they think of Google right off the bat, they, you know, they know that Google's not professing to be a faith based company or a Christian company or something like that. And so, you know, they they think that, oh, sure, you know, they'll probably do this for other kinds of nonprofits, but not a not a church. And of course, we're coming out of this season uh, of what we've dealt with, not just with the pandemic, but politically, where uh, this season of censorship uh, and where a lot of churches have been concerned about like what they can say and everything. So I can kind of also see, um, you know, how a church would be, well, you know, I'm sure that's not for a church like us. Um, so yeah. I can see how that would be a mindset and a thought. Yeah. Yeah, I think that there's uh, that. That's definitely something that I felt when we first signed up for the grant that it probably wouldn't be for churches. Back when I signed up, this was back in two thousand and probably thirteen or fourteen when we applied for it. So I've been a user of this for uh, for what is that eight years? I guess now that we've been yeah. using the grant. Um, and when we signed up for it at our church there, you back then you used to have to write an essay that went with it. So it was a big grant process. You had to write this, and I you know, made this nicely worded essay. And I really focused on the non-faith-based parts of our ministry and the things we were doing in our community just because I was hopeful. But in reality, they they really, there's not any kind of a check on those kinds of things. It is, it is fully open for churches. Any 501c3 uh, is able to go ahead and apply for this. And then if you're in yeah. another country, uh, this is something that's interesting too, is that Google has since expanded to mm-hmm. uh, dozens of countries are now eligible to be able yeah. to get this Google grant. So if you have a, a not-for-profit or a, a faith-based organization in, uh, it, all over Europe, in countries in Africa, there's places yeah. all over where you can claim this grant here now. So yeah. um, I, I do think, now we should probably get into it a little bit. Um, this is a good spot to talk about some of the requirements for it. Um, you right. do have to have a 501c3 or you need to be under a parent organization that has their own 501c3 and a letter from the IRS saying that you're part of that organization. So we do run into once in a while that churches, um, while they have a state uh, nonprofit letter, like something from their individual state in the U.S., they don't have one on the federal level. And that does run into uh, a problem for a small percentage of churches, I would say, out there. Most churches aren't set up that way. But um, it, there are some, uh, some, I guess, finer points about that, but it right. definitely is open for churches, correct? Yep, very, very much so, correct. And uh, yeah, and there's a lot of, it, it's interesting you mentioned how they have opened this up in other countries too. We just, uh, I told you about uh, a ministry the other day in Kenya, a missions yeah. ministry in Kenya that had the grant already for a while and uh, yeah. looking for help with it. And and so it is definitely, Google's kind of widened the, uh, the, the opportunity for, uh, churches everywhere. And also just if you're, like you said, an official 501c3, um, you can take advantage of this. And and we, we, what, we had a Christian foster care ministry that we've been helping yeah. with it. So there's all sorts of great, unique 501c3s that uh, they can take advantage of it. Uh, but definitely it is for churches too. And churches yeah. need to know that. 
I'm so, I'm, I'm so thrilled, like just that we're helping churches in Kenya and churches. We yeah. have a clients in England. It's just so fun that we get to uh, just see the uh, the gospel going into all these countries through this yeah. uh, Google grant. So really cool for us, we'd say. So mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Number three, I'll go ahead and hit that one. Um, the Google grant is for big churches only, uh, not yeah. for small churches. We encounter this quite a bit. Uh, and really, there is no distinction whatsoever on who is eligible for it. Uh, yeah. There, I, I think that this is one of those great equalizers because the idea that a small church can have access to $10,000 every month in marketing, I mean, yeah. that's incredible because we have clients that their entire budget is less than $10,000 a year, right? Like yeah. that's their, I'm sorry, $10,000 a month, $120,000 yeah. a year. So we have clients that are in that that situation there. Uh, and here, basically it's giving them their entire budget all over again, just to be used for advertising on Google's platform. So uh, yeah. I think it's a fantastic thing for smaller churches. I pastored a smallish church uh, that was doing the Google grant and it worked really well yeah. for us. What were there. you, so, you- at that time when you started it, what were you guys? What size were you? We had, we probably averaged about, um, oh, 50, 60 people showing up on a Sunday. We yeah. had in the neighborhood of, I would say, our, our budget was probably around six or $7,000 a month is how much we brought in. And yeah. then we got this uh, influx of being able to do the grant and we saw tons of visitors from yeah. it and the church grew and tripled and probably quadrupled in our finances. And it's, it was really yeah. a trip. Now, there were other things we were doing right. <laughs> it yeah. wasn't just the, the Google grant. We, uh, we tried to preach well and we uh, helped yeah. people get assimilated and did lots of other stuff too. But this grant was a great way that uh, we helped people get in the doors for the first time, I would say. Uh, yeah. So, And I'll, I'll go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, and I was just going to say, we help churches for 3,000 member churches with it and 30 member yeah. churches. I think totally. I, I remember a 30 member church in uh, in New England that we uh, uh, help with the grant. And so it, it's definitely yeah. for any size church. Now, I, I'll say this is that um, there's a couple of advantages that some churches have over others. Um, mm-hmm. I think one of them is that if it's uh, if you're a um, if you're in a big city, um, then there are some advantages just because you have more people in range of your ads. Yeah. Uh, whereas we, we're pretty careful in not showing ads. If you're a church in rural Georgia, we're not showing people um, ads uh, in in Tennessee for your church, right? right? We're trying to limit right. those kinds of things. And so if you're in a rural part of the country, let's say you're in Montana and you don't have yeah. a major metro area anywhere within a hundred miles of your church there, well, it just kind of limits the pool of people you can reach out to. So right. um, in general, r- rural churches tend to be smaller than some urban churches just because there's fewer people to draw. Uh, and then I'll say this too, is that um, a big factor in how well your grant performs is how good your website is for your church there. And so if you're a church yeah. that has invested a lot in your website, it's something that's important to you. Um, yeah. Chances are you'll get better results with the grant because uh, the fact is when someone sees one of those ads, they click on it, they yep. land on your church website. And if it makes yeah. a good first impression, then their odds of you connecting with them are much higher. And if it yeah. um, annoys them and it doesn't make a good first impression, the odds of them sticking around are um, are not yeah. great. Uh, so, and having good, uh, good content on your website. And I've had a lot of churches that have asked, okay, can this go to our Facebook page or, um, you know, to social media and know the, the way that Google has set these ads up is to right. steer traffic to your website or a good landing page with good content on there. So yeah, there's, there's other, like you said, advantages you have when you do other things well, and especially yep. your web presence in general. Yeah. Yep. But it doesn't limit it to only big churches. Small churches can nope. have great websites too. And uh, yep. we'd love to help with that. <laughs> so, Absolutely. Another area Absolutely. we can help with. So hit number Good. four for us. Yeah. So if you claim the grant, Google's going to control what you say. Uh, yeah. and, uh, and again, I, we kind of touched it. We've, we've talked a little bit of, uh, in recent months about censorship and everything that's going on out there. And, and uh, while that is something that is, is good to, to keep in mind when you're, yep. when you're looking at all forms of marketing and, and what your communications are online, uh, it is a reality that some of that is taking place. Um, yep. But we're finding that churches have a lot of freedom. We, we see gospel oriented keywords all the time and use those Absolutely. for churches and, uh, and so that it, there's there's more freedom, I think, than there's more freedom that I 
that that I would probably think if I didn't know about the grant, I would maybe think about that too. I would say, well, I yeah. don't know how much we can actually say. Sure. There's more freedom than than a church would actually know. I would say. Yeah, our uh, our social media team here at Reach Right they spend a lot of time uh, managing some of our posts and people commenting about how evil Google is and how Google's going to, they'll say this exact thing that Google's going to control what we say if we get this grant or don't sign mm-hmm. your soul over to Google or <laughs> these kinds of things. <laughs> and, and I, I get it. I, I totally, yeah, I'm yeah. not here to make campaign or be an ambassador for Google to say that they are uh, totally in alignment with our mission as churches. Cause right. I don't agree mm-hmm. that I don't believe that to be the case, uh, right. but um, I, I haven't seen uh, any hard censorship in this area and where we have seen some like control that Google exercises, it's usually over things that um, are even outside of what we preach and teach. It certainly isn't uh, for um, for faith based reasons. So just the other day, uh, we talked. We had a client that was doing a lot of recovery ministries. Right, they were right. doing all kinds of uh, like uh, alcohol abuse, drug abuse recovery ministries. And we set up all these great ads. We were ready to do that. And then lo and behold, we didn't read the fine print on this one area. And there's all kinds of areas like this. But Google doesn't allow recovery or addiction-based service ads unless you're some kind of a medically approved organization there, which churches generally are not going to have that kind of medical approval and staff to do those things. Their right. reasoning behind it, I don't know all the details behind it, but I kind of get that is that there's all kinds of people out there that may promise uh, strange, non uh, unhealthy ways to get over addiction and that kind of stuff. Um, mm-hmm. You know, this was a church doing something akin to like a celebrate recovery and we had to make some shifts in those things. Now that didn't preclude them from talking about the gospel or their right. church services or small groups or anything. Uh, it just in this one specific area, they had to, they had, they had to kind of, give that over and not be able to talk about this. And there's other reasons for why that is. So I guess yeah. there is some truth to that is that they will not allow ads on certain kinds of topics. Um, you know, but I think that the vast majority of ads are still allowed. And that really yep. is one of the first times we've run into an issue like that there. So, yep. yeah, that's good. Why don't you hit up five? Yeah, we'll do. Uh, number five, the Google grant is easy to manage. <laughs> this is false. <laughs> I think that that's <laughs> that's one of these things that I think people think is they they hear about the Google grant they see hey ten thousand dollars a month that's one hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year let's get it um, I was in that camp I'm that that yeah. guy that I always want to try and figure something out myself I hate having to hire people to You're go the and DIY do things guy. I, I am You're totally the DIY. the DIY guy. I need to get a plumber to come and help me with some stuff at the house, but I, I just am reluctant to do it because I want to get it done myself because I think yeah. I probably can, but in reality, I can't. I, yeah. I did this with the grant. So I, I got the grant and I figured, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do it. Uh, I'm going to figure it out. And I was able to spend, I think, like our first year of having the grant, we probably spent on average about 15 to $25 a month of yeah. the $10,000 we were eligible for. And yeah. I think what people think is that, okay, I'll make an ad and I'll, I'll, I'll make it so for keywords about our church. And then anybody searching for churches in in Honolulu, they're going to come yeah. up and, and they're going to get our ad. But the problem is, is that those aren't the ads that actually drive results because that gets searched for uh, by comparison, very rarely compared to much broader faith-based topics and people looking for other kinds of spiritual answers. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that is one reason why it's not easy to manage. Other than that, it's just super technical. Like getting yeah. uh, the the grant itself, like there's all kinds of technical requirements that we need to keep in order to maintain the grant. So uh, I know this may bore some of our audience, but I'll give you a few examples of this. One is you have to maintain a 5% click-through ratio. And what that means is for every time you show an ad, 5% of people that that ad gets delivered to, people that see that ad, 5% of them have to click through to it. So on average, for most paid ads, the actual rate is closer to like one and a half to 2% of how many people click through on those ads when they're seen. Think about it. When you see an ad on Google, I personally try to not click on the ads, right? right. I, I look at that, okay, that's an ad, that's an ad. Okay, that's the result that I'm actually looking for, the third one down. So yeah. people are actively trying to avoid these things and we need to maintain an over 5% click-through ratio on that. All that yeah. to say, it usually takes an expert. I know for us, 
Uh, I'm usually pretty sharp at this kind of stuff. I had to hire someone to come alongside and help us do it. Um, we have people that have gone through dozens of hours in Google certification process to get good at it, to be able to, to manage the grant there. And um, unless you have someone really willing in your church to, to make it a, a big part-time job um, yeah. to learn the grant and manage it, you probably are better off hiring someone to do it for you because it just isn't very easy. What, what do you no. have to add to that, Ian? Yeah, no, it's funny. I, I, I hear from, um, you know, churches that, you know, are looking and in, interested into this and they say, you know, oh, you know, I have, we have a kid here fresh out of college. He's a, you know, he's a designer or a communications guy and man, we're just going to turn it over to him and he can handle it. And, and you know what? There is a small percentage of churches that maybe have someone that is willing yeah. to, like you just said, First of all, you have to educate yourself on how yep. to become an AdWords expert. And yep. then what, what did we kind of break it down to? We thought that if a church volunteer were to, first of all, if they had the expertise, once they right. had that, they'd probably need to spend at least 10 plus hours a month of real work. Uh, yeah, you know, I'd say at a minimum. At a minimum, yeah to, yeah, to to really be able to spend a lot of that 10,000. Um, and, and so... We've heard that before that, oh, you know, we have someone savvy in our church. We have a kid and he'll do it. Um, and then we end up usually, not always, but hearing from that same church several months down the line, oh, yeah, that didn't yeah. work. <laughs> right. So not <laughs> yeah. that that, again, and that's not for every church. If you do happen to have someone who's going to do put in the time and, and and you know, or you could pay them part time and, and they really learn it and do it well, then more power to you. But we, we find that to be pretty rare. Yeah, and I don't want this to come across as a as a sales pitch for reach no. or anything here. We're happy to help uh, churches with this, but uh, I actually encourage people to learn it. If you have a desire to learn this stuff, and you have a you're a technical kind of person, and uh, that's something that you would like to do, man, have at it. It is it is something that you can actually make a great career in this area too, yeah. as we have found as we've learned a lot of this kind of stuff and built a team around it. Uh, but it's something that uh, it does take a lot of expertise. You do not already have that. You might, you're might. you not going to stumble into the fact that you just already know how to run Google Grants uh, or Google mm -hmm. Ads. It's something that takes a lot of expertise to figure out. There are lots of rules. And then honestly, to get good at it, it takes a long time too. So uh, yeah. even if you know what you're doing, trying to figure out what are the right keywords to target? What are the right ads? What ads work? I mean, we have years and years now and and just thousands of hours of experience in trying out different things. Honestly, with advertising, most of the stuff you try out doesn't work very well. And yeah. you, you are constantly honing it and trying to get it tight and make it the most effective campaign that you can. And we have lots of time and experience that. So expect some uh, some hardships and some of the challenges with that. But if you're someone that wants to pick that up and has those skills, hey, have at it. We'd love for churches. Yeah. We'd, love to, we'd love to even chat with you. <laughs> Feel free yeah. to uh, comment in here if that's something you're learning there or let us know how you felt about that. That's good. That's good. Cool. Well, I'll, number six. I'll go at number six. You can use the grant to pay for AdWords management services. So <laughs> that would be lovely. Uh, but yeah. uh, Google's not being that generous. And I don't know if any company would be uh, to just out of that grant say, yeah, you know, and if we've made it clear already uh, that we do help churches with this, we have a fee. And one of the most common things that I do here is that, oh, okay, great. So your fee, it's going to come out of the 10,000. So we'll still have a lot, but, uh, you know, left over, but your fee is going to come out of that. That would be nice, but yeah. that's not how it works. No, it, unfortunately, that would be great if it would. Google, Google, Google sent you a, a cash uh, fee to handle someone's management services. Uh, just doesn't yeah. work that way, though. They're not giving you any cash whatsoever. No. It's all on the uh, grant platform there. So um, yeah. I'll, I'll say this, too, is that grant management... Uh, for like we were talking before, like for this kind of a service, uh, you're talking 10, 15, sometimes 20 hours a week is what people are e able, or I'm sorry, a month are what people are able to put into this to get these kinds of results that we're talking about here. That's what you need to expect from someone who's working at it for your church there. Um, and so if you just kind of do the math on that and you are hiring someone that's a professional that's gone through this stuff, it's expensive. Like getting, yeah. I, I want to, I guess it's a warning is if you go out there and, and look, I'll, I'll just kind of give some industry standard numbers on this. So yeah. we, as a, as a company at reach right, and just from doing marketing, I, we understand what the, the market rate on 
on ad management services in in most platforms. So whether it be Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or it's in this case Google Search, generally Google Search companies that help with search management, they charge usually about 20% is the going rate of whatever the overall spend is. Uh, yeah. So usually that's uh, if in this case, it's kind of crazy numbers, but in this case, if it's a $10,000 grant and you're able to spend $10,000, the market rate for that for most ad services is $2,000. So 20% of the $10,000, yeah. $2,000 a month. Now, obviously, that's way too much for the vast majority of churches to spend. That's right. why we charge nothing like that. You can learn yeah. more about how we charge for our services and stuff on our website if you're interested. But um, that there is... Uh, real cost involved with managing this because you need professionals to do this kind of stuff yep. in most cases. And so, um, yeah, unfortunately, uh, that can't be, get covered by the grant. <laughs> it, yep. would be, uh, it would sure be great, though, wouldn't it? It would. It would. In that's a perfect it. world. Yeah, that's it. All right. Let me wrap this up here with number seven. Uh, grant recipients will use the full $10,000 every single month. Uh, this is uh, unfortunately a myth. We wish this was the case, yeah. but even despite our best efforts, um, it is often hard to spend all $10,000 of the yeah. $10,000 Google grant. Uh, yeah. We have done it. We have some clients that were there able to do that. For that one church. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've had some, I, I, yeah. I know at our church, we've done it before at the journey. We did yeah. it a few times. Uh, we have a couple of churches, I think, that have gotten there. We have one that consistently does it and butts up against yeah. it. And uh, I, I can't boil down the reason why into some simple statement here. Otherwise, we would fix it and we would make right. it so every church was always there. But there are uh, there are dozens and dozens of factors as to why this is. Uh, some of those are tied to population within your church. I think right. the biggest part of it is what your website, the content that's currently on your website. Um, if you had unlimited great content on your website, we probably could get that there. But it's yeah. uh, it's something that on average, uh, I think, like we were saying before, if you're managing it yourself, plan on you know 25 maybe $50 a month in spend. You might be yeah. able to do that. Our average client... Uh, they're spending about four to six thousand dollars of the ten thousand dollars. They're averaging. I think our last numbers I saw was about fourteen hundred clicks every month going on to their website, which is a kind of a big deal. I mean, that, that's really yeah. great. Um, I think to see those kinds of numbers. We've done some rough math, and uh, our numbers come out to say that uh, that has led to an average of twenty-eight visitors coming to yeah. a church in an average month for our average church within. Uh, those kinds of numbers there. So anyway, it's something that uh, a lot of churches think that that it will be ten thousand dollars a month, and that's how much you're eligible for. But that right. in in practicality is a pretty hard number to hit, uh, yeah. and we should celebrate really anything that uh, you know our, our kind of metric is anything over a yeah. few thousand dollars is a win, and yeah. we're trying to continue to maximize that. What do you have to add to that though, Ian? Not much. I think that that's, you know, it's a good thing to finish on there because that number is so big and it, and it yeah. looks great. And, and again, it is, it can be attainable, but it is, it is very difficult. And I think other than everything that you said is, is that Google kind of makes it hard to get to that number. Not that they're trying to uh, just, you know, say, oh, hey, you, no, we're not giving you really 10,000 and we're going to make it, they don't want to intentionally make it difficult, but they're always changing yeah. Back end stuff and key, you know, acceptable keywords being used a certain way, and their policies, procedures, and things kind of can sometimes change on the back end. So they keep companies like us on our toes, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, having to look at that and you know adapt to whatever changes they they may make that that determine how much of that spend that you can get. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly right. So, yeah, so we wish we could get it every ten thousand dollars every single month for every single church, and it does happen. Uh, on occasion, uh, but yeah. we, I think the results are still pretty fantastic of what your church can get from this. So yeah. I guess that's the bottom line of all this. Uh, hopefully we dispelled some of those myths that people had bought into or thought about with the, when it comes to this grant here. Uh, I think that it is the one of the greatest opportunities that churches have to take advantage of right now. It literally is 
Uh, if you're willing to put in the time or hire someone and pay a little bit to, yeah. to get it, I mean, it is an enormous return on investment. So if I was planting a church or pastoring a church right now, and I had a marketing budget of some kind, the absolute first thing I would spend money on would be getting this Google grant and then finding someone to manage it for us because the the the... I guess the return on it is just enormous and you won't find that anywhere else where you're paying for every single eye on Facebook and you're paying for every single eye on a mailer. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're actually getting so much for free with this grant here. So it's kind of a no brainer to take advantage of it, I think. And so, yeah, hope if this is something that's been helpful to you guys, that it's something that your church can, can grab onto anything to add as we close up here today. No, that's great partner. And, uh, we just hope that, uh, this was helpful to many out there and, uh, and gave you a better understanding of what uh, the opportunity is. So it's uh, no better time than now, like you said. And I think uh, most churches now understand that everyone is uh, using these to Google everything, right? Yeah. So it's uh, it's it's where people are looking. So I think that that's a good thing to end with there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks for joining us today, guys. If this has been helpful for you, uh, it would mean the world to us if you would rate, review, subscribe, comment, uh, let us know what you think. Uh, we appreciate the Retrite family out there, and we'll catch you guys next week. See ya.